Rap News Street Politics, Best Hood Channel on YouTube, and we back with another video putting the grades on these dudes that's in the street. We up again with volume three of Crip Representation in the city right now, man. Now we didn't touch on all kind of members in the city. We did two volumes of the Crips. We did the Bloods. We did the OGs. And there's some more Crip representation in the city right now that we gotta touch on. Now the more we get to this, the further away we gonna get from real media personalities, people that's really on the internet, and the closer we gonna get to dudes that's still living in the streets and is still trying to make a way out of the streets and transform into these household names in LA or, or outside of LA, you know, just bubble up in the media period or in the rap game period. But with that being said, we doing the usual grade. We talking about reputation, activity, and impact in the streets and in the hood of LA, man. Now, eventually we gonna bubble up. We gonna get out of LA. We gonna do all kind of shit. We gonna do all the stuff that people be asking for in the comments, man. But it's so much that go on out here and it gotta be covered, man. We can't look over everything. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, y'all make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We still on the road to 100K, man. We getting real close and man, we appreciate all the followers. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Keep following us on Instagram. It's the best hood channel on YouTube, man. Let's get straight to it. And I just saw Rap News and Street Politics doing their uh, Crip report card. And so I know what wow. grade you guys got, even though you all don't know. Cuz I better have a C. Now, the first dude on the list, man, that we gonna talk about has been somebody that was representing that neighborhood Crip car. And for the last couple years, since he had an incident in his hood, we ain't really heard much from this dude. We got Go Get a KB. And at this point, I don't know if he's a non-affiliate or if he's still a member. But it's been said that he hood hopped from neighborhood rolling 40 crib to neighborhood rolling 90 crib. And then the 90s is where everything crashed out for this dude. Get your arms up, neighborhood to neighborhood, ain't from neighborhood, don't say neighborhood. Neighborhood just to say the hood, I can say the hood, cause I bang it, I bang it. Hood. Over here, you know my name, good, just change, some may change, girl. Who I think I is, nigga, ask if I'm tripping, I'm a tripping, I got blowing, I got shit, I got your bitch, she on my dick, so who tripping? Everybody in here, who blood and who crippin'? Nigga talking till you slippin' and I put him. I'm with the quet the quet the book, get that where you rumble, stop playing. Now go get a KB came up when dudes like Chico was buzzing. They was doing a neighborhood anthem, neighborhood to the neighborhood. That snitch camera Terrell was around. 2018, that whole little era around there. Go get a KB was buzzing. But man, this shit seemed to boil over in 2022 when he got caught by the Hoovers, man, when he got caught by his enemies. <laughs> Now, the first thing is, we already talked a little bit about the hood hopping, but it was said that he was originally from Fodies. Now, we know already we starting off on a bad foot. Ain't no way a nigga should be hood hopping out here. It, for what? He got put off the Fodies. That should have been the end of this shit. But seemingly so, he got put off the Fodies, went to Jesse Owens, went hanging out with the 90s. And like I said, at this time, 9-0, music-wise, they was buzzing. They was really putting on for the 30s to the hunts. But this video dropped to go get a KB, man. We seen him getting his feet whooped by his enemies. And uh, this nigga start crying. This nigga crying and apologizing, saying sorry. You know, and a lot of motherfuckers, they didn't know exactly what it was. They don't know if he was getting put off 9-0. Nigga saying it's the Hoovers that got him. He sitting there crying, bloody, saying sorry. Then it come out that the nigga wearing panties. My thing is, it ain't, I, I don't want to see the nigga wearing panties. But I didn't see the nigga wearing panties. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if that was just threw in there as some extra smut on top of this nigga looking like a bitch while the Hoovers put the paws on this nigga or if he actually was in some motherfucking women's underwear. But he got enough strikes with number one hood hopping. Then he go to the nine O's. Then he get whooped by his enemies and he crying and saying sorry. The nine O's disown this nigga. They're like, man, this nigga, he, he not from over here. And from that point, man, it, it seemed to put a fracture in all the motion that he had going on. And, and rightfully so. Ain't no way a nigga should be outside representing anything. And he crying when he take an ass whooping. And it ain't like them niggas was really fucking a nigga up. They was just regularly jumping a nigga. Usually a nigga just get mad. Shit like that just, just make a nigga really want to get more active. 
not ball up and cry. Like I said, they wasn't even beating a nigga ass like that. Why? Because he was still making sounds. He was still talking. So they couldn't have been whooping his ass like that. You know what I'm saying? But for him to go out like that, representation is crazy, man. All the activity, everything went out the window with the allegations of the underwear, crying, all that bullshit. Go get a KB, get some F. This is not the representation we want to see from this shit. Ain't no way. And, you know, I still think he out here trying to push a line or still be a tough guy and do all this. Stop this shit, man. It's over with. This shit's done. And, you know, to the, to the young niggas, man, that's joining this shit, man. If you got any of these tendencies inside of you, nigga, cut this shit before you even start. If you know you will be doing anything that this nigga done did, don't even begin this shit, man. Now, the next dude we got on the list is going to be somebody from Northside Long Beach. He been in the industry for a long time. We first seen him come out with Snoop. We got Jabalo from Brick Boy Crip. Again, the north side of Long Beach. Kill five times, so any nigga from your hood getting hit five times. Two, that's ten shots, any door. Finna have his mama sick like a ass got the flu. And I be thugging with it on me. If he me and 50 blue, free that boy Shaggy fast. Man, I know he gon' shoot. I was only 16, gang sliding in the coop. All white Lexus, it was me and Killer Poop. Now, when Jabba made his debut, he was really putting on for Brick Boy. You know, not a lot of people at that time was coming out the north side of Long Beach. Now, we got a bunch of dudes that seemingly coming from the north side. But again, Jabba was a pioneer and kind of like the new wave of people after the Long Beach heyday. You know what I'm saying? Hella legends came out of Long Beach. Not saying that Jabba Loke is a legend by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, he was repping that shit hard. And, you know, everything seemed to be cool with Jabba up until recently. You know, he was catching cases going down, doing doing all kind of crazy shit, not seeming to be taking the rap game serious. One foot in the streets, all that shit cool. So we can say the impact was there with him being from Brick Boy. You know, Brick Boy was synonymous with, with Jabba Lowe. And he seemed to be with the activities. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, he went down back to back cases, but he couldn't just seem to get right with the music shit. But the key thing where Jabba fucked up is going to be his reputation at the moment, man. Like I said, Jabba went down on the case. I think he sat down for like two, three years, popped back out. Not too long after he got out, he was back on another flock, man. This time in Tustin, Orange County. And if anybody from out here, man, they know Orange County is really not going to be the place to be playing at, man. Especially as a black dude. You know, they got a lot of Hispanic gangs out there. But uh, the black dudes, the black gang members, they aren't really existent towards Anaheim, Tustin, Newport. The whole Orange County period is not going to be a place where gangbanging is really operating. But even with that being said, you know, him and his co-defendants found a place that was fit for a move they thought was going to be lucrative. So what we seen from Jabba, man, we seen, now I ain't got to say allegedly, I don't, I don't know, you know, but niggas was masked up, so I'll still say allegedly, you know, but I, I, these niggas already sitting down for the shit. I don't know if they've been sentenced. I'm pretty sure they have. I can't say. But um, allegedly, Jabba Lope ran up into the jewelry store and did they shit. Now, some key things about it, man. We seen Jabba Lope go down in December, but the first dudes on the case ended up going down like June, July. So it's pretty safe to say that niggas was snitching on Jabalo. It's pretty safe to say. I can't say who exactly yet, but I know another nigga was out at the time. You know, niggas had, had went down and got arrested by the feds and then got out. But, you know, the feds will release you. You know what I'm saying? The feds ain't really leveraging no bail. The state case is going to have bails and bonds. The FBI is not dealing with that. They either let your ass out and you return to court or you stay up in there and face your shit just like that. So I assume that's how that dude that got arrested from the FBI, that's that's how he got out. The FBI let him out. Can't say the dude snitched, but it's safe to say somebody told for some dudes to go down in June, July, and then Jabalo get arrested in December. But fast forward to when Jabalo go down. The paperwork is out. Mr. Edison, when the people get him in that room, he first say, look, I don't want to talk. I don't want to do none of that. Then he proceed to talk after being read his Miranda case. And some of the first words out of his mouth is he talking about his brother, the one that's driving the car. That's it, man. That's all it got to be. We, we ain't got to go no further into the case. The nigga opened his mouth after being read as Miranda. Talk about the case willingly. Talk about being high, which is always a common factor on some bullshit. And this nigga implicating people on the move. Fuck what they tell you they got, why they got you. With, you ain't got to cooperate none of their stories. And it seemed like, you know, Jabalo had to get some shit off his chest. He was pressured and he didn't shut the fuck up. So this is why we saw Hitman 50 accusing Jabaloka having paperwork. This is why we saw 
Jabba Log Mama come in talking about her son ain't got paperwork. Look, this is paperwork. You got statements. The nigga Jabba made statements. And this is what fucked his reputation up. All the activity, the impact from this point, the cripping is bad, man. Like I said, Jabba Log was solid up until this situation, man. And I don't know if it's because the feds was involved on some shit. He had just got out from doing two, three years. Now he back on a on an armed, aggravated robbery. You know, some nasty shit. But still, man, niggas know what they signed up for, man. And regardless whoever told on you, Jabba, it's just not favorable for you to be playing back and forth. What he told on me, I'm going to tell on him. And now nah, fuck that. Let that nigga do what he going to do. And you just keep it solid for yourself. Now, I know that's a slippery slope in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Because the streets don't owe you nothing. But still, man, he got to live with making that statement. So Jabba Lowe got to get an F, man. You got to get an F for making statements to the police, implying who was there, who was doing what, where the fuck he was, all that shit. F territory, man. It's ugly. Zabalok, you failed at this crippling shit, man. Now, next up on the list, man, we going to Compton. Now, we know it's a lot of dudes that's coming out of Compton, man. But at one point, this dude was the biggest name coming out of Compton in like the last five years. We got Roddy Rich from Park Village Compton Crip. Now, Roddy Rich, man, has had a little scrutiny when it comes to his game banging. And you know, at face value, this shit look, it looked kind of bad for him with Yael, it's a member from Park Village named Yael. When Yael came out and was kind of speaking bad on Roddy Rich Crippen, so to speak. Now I think the facts that Yael was trying to present was, basically Roddy Rich ain't put in no work. But the way that he stated his argument, it looked like he was just hating. And it may be true, man. Roddy Rich probably ain't put in a grip of work being from Park Village. Mind you, he's had a successful music career. He's been around the game for a good amount of time. He's not that old. But, you know, it came into question as put on. But the thing we see about Roddy Rich is he be with them members. He be with them niggas from his hood. And that was something that uh, Roddy Rich and Wack, who's always in crib business, like we say, explained to Yael. He's still with them members and top members from Park Village. So it really seemed like Yael was really hating on Roddy Rich trying to downplay his crip and like we said in previous videos just because you from a hood don't mean you a gunner or a robber a killer whatever everybody plays a different role in the hood some niggas sell dope some niggas don't do anything but that doesn't always say that you're not from the hood but again we can't say what roddy rich was doing before he got put on mind you it was at a younger age i'm sure in the in them late teen years i believe but uh so far, Roddy has represented himself right. He represented his set right. And he didn't fall when pressured by another nigga from his set. Now, we've seen Roddy in his hood, multiple music videos in his hood. We recently seen him back in Compton with the Kendrick Lamar shit around them members. So we can't say Roddy Rich is not from Yompton, as they call it. And I don't even think that's up for debate, man. But I know when some people see Roddy, they don't associate him with some super game banging activity and shit like that. But he had impact in his hood. He put Park Village on the map to the music industry. His reputation is good. No matter what Yael was talking about, nobody else spoke up about Roddy Rich having smut on his name, talking about his put on or anything like that. But we can't say he's the most active member out there. You know what I'm saying? But still, with all that being said, Roddy Rich is still solid representation for Park Village Compton Crip. If he wasn't, the members wouldn't be rolling around him, man. We got to give Roddy Rich an A. You know, it's sad to see that turmoil between him and his homies, but that's normal. You know what I'm saying? Now, the next dude we got on the list, man, is somebody that's came out of hiding. We got Rimble from Die City Crip. Running up on us, you're a dick smoker. Don't make us bring them choppers with the kick on them. Big bro, you are not a joint no more, little Jody. On paper, we're telling it all, and that's your big homie. Get on minivans and Hondas with some tin on them. AR pistols with the shells and the shits on them. I caught him dancing in his hood. He's a TikToker. I'm two-stepping with my Glock. I'm a crip walker. Now, one interesting thing, man, about this whole Rimble Stink Team situation, man, if y'all go check our page out, man, like two years ago, we dropped the video and pushed the narrative of, man, where's Rimble? Mr. Where's Waldo himself, man? And Rimble, I appreciate you for running with my narrative, man, and turning that into your next marketing scheme. But it still remains, man, what the fuck happened after Draco died? But that's not what we're going to talk about with Rimble today, man. We got to talk about the Crippin. And Rimble's representing the Crippin, man. That's what he's doing. But to go deeper in that, we got to go to his section, man. We got to talk about Dodge City. Dye City, like like all y'all know, what's really hot right now, Dye City's in San Pedro. He's pushing San Pedro. He's not pushing LA, South Central, Compton. He's pushing his section. 
And the thing we've always heard about Dodge City for a minute now is that they kind of got ran out their section, man. Southside Rancho San Pedro Tese has been putting it down in San Pedro, man. It's really only a couple sets in San Pedro, man. With Dodge City being one, Rancho San Pedro being another, I think they got another Southside hood, like on the north side of San Pedro. But uh, this poses a question of how can the Crippin be solid when the hood ain't solid? And I think that's another slippery slope question because just because your whole hood may be inactive, it may be 10 of y'all, it may, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case is, your hood may not be ringing bells, but we can't say that just because you don't have a lot of members in your section don't mean that certain members aren't extremely active and can get active with other people. So we're not going to use Dodge City not being a super active hood against Rimble because he could be an active member. But that's when we have to turn to the role he's kind of played in the streets, man. And I'm not going to lie, man. Rimble plays it very safe. Now, you know, him turning on the Stink team after Draco died, really kind of tucking his tail. I know he probably didn't want to beef with niggas from Inglewood. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But if the shoe fits, that's kind of what it seemed like. You know, the shit got hot in the kitchen. Draco was doing a lot of popping it. And everybody that was with Draco was being sucked into this Inglewood and Stink team beat. And I think Rimble didn't want to fuck with that. I really think he wanted to stay far away from beefing with the city of Inglewood or even Bloods, period or anybody that had a problem with Draco, especially because they ended up killing Draco. And like we touched on with that Draco murder, man, once you take the head, the body just going to fall by the wayside. And that's exactly what happened with the Stink Team. You know, I'm sure they thought Draco was untouchable. And man, Draco was a force in the music industry. Draco did a lot for West Coast rap. And how he was rapping, he damn near seemed untouchable. But I think a lot of shit hit home for people like Rimble and maybe even Money Monk when that situation transpired. And for that, we got to say Rimble kind of tucked his tail, which is why we start pushing that Where's Waldo narrative. It didn't seem like he wanted that smoke, man. And recently, he popped out at the Kendrick pop-up concert. You know what I'm saying? And he was looking, you know, he was looking real secluded with the shit. And niggas was saying that he didn't even stick around. Rightfully so. He said he not from LA, he from San Pedro. Why the fuck he want to hang around LA or Eastside motherfucker, Compton motherfuckers? He don't want nothing to do with this shit. He want to stay in San Pedro with that coupled with the fact that we haven't really had too much gang implications or or gang smut with Rimble's Crippin. We got to give him an average ass grade, man. Rimble got to get a C for this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's neither here nor there with his Crippin. So that's why you got to stay right in the middle of the road with this shit. Now, next up, man, we got to jump back into the list, headed back to the east side. This time we're going to South Park, man, right by the low bottoms. Five Trey Avalon, Gangsta Crip. We got Baby Shooter. Thanks. Now, Baby Shooter is not somebody that a lot of motherfuckers don't hear about, but he tried to make a name for himself, and he's still trying to make a name for himself with his rapping and shit coming out of Five Trey. Now, I say this every time we touch on Five Trey, Avalon's active than a motherfucker, man. On 51st, I, I say this every time with the Avalons, man. They active in the motherfucker at South Park. And man, Baby Shooter's not an exception to that. Baby Shooter is an active member from Five Trey Avalon. You know, he sat down, he's done a good amount of time. And you know, he's trying to make good on that with staying out this time and, uh, and doing this shit with the rapping. But he seemingly got off to a bad start hanging around the wrong motherfuckers, man. And we touched on that when we did that G-Face video. Again, that video got took down because G-Face filed the shit on us. YouTube made us take it down. He was snitching before these informant allegations came out. We pulled his car with the paperwork, the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? But around that time, we seen him fucking with Bont and Giuno, and we seen him fucking with Baby Shooter. And we seen him trying to have ties in the gardens and with other niggas from Avalon and just kind of get more tapped in. Luckily, he didn't get the chance to because that could have spelled a new indictment for the Avalons, fucking with somebody like that. And I think Baby Shooter was somebody that would have been real instrumental on opening the door to a snitch-ass nigga like G-Face. That's the reason why Baby Shooter is being spoken on right now. Now, aside from that, when he was in the halls, man, some people said that he was banging the Pueblos and the Fighters Pueblos not far from the Fire Trey Avalons, not something that, that's out of the realm of possibility, but I heard uh, some of his people was from Pueblos I don't know if that's true, that he was pushing the Pueblos and, and switched over to the Avalons. I can't say, but that is looming over his head as well. 
but he's a five Trey Avalon represented today. No proof like go get a KB that he was hanging or banging with the Pueblos. But the thing is with Baby Shooter, man, the choices, the choice to hang around a nigga that was already being said to have snitched on somebody, regardless of how long ago it was. Being around this dude, attaching your face card to this dude, attaching your hood to this dude was just a bad look. And it didn't seem like he knew any better. At that time, we seen him on uh, Fig Munity or, or back on Fig. He was kind of sticking up for the nigga. And that shit aged hella bad. Now, some bad statements being made. When Smack was talking shit about G-Face, Baby Shooter didn't seem happy. I wonder how he feel now, you know? And like I said, activities there. He's putting on for a set. I'm pretty sure he got impact in it. But this situation right here brought his reputation down. You can't let a motherfucker dupe you. After they got snitch allegations, you, you know, you decide to not believe the masses and believe this nigga who's allegedly a snitch and start rolling with him and attach your name to him. For that case, man, we not saying baby shooter snitched or did anything like that. He just made a bad decision with displaying himself to the public. We got to give baby shooter a beat, man. Watch who you rolling with. You know what I'm saying? Watch who you hanging around and watch who you attaching your name and your hood to, baby shooter. Next up, we going to the west side, man. We got to touch on a young life from Rolling 30 Harlem Crip, man. We got ASM Bobster. Think I'm round by my seven crib, I got my gun. Bitch, I'm late, now I ain't crippin'. Do that shit for fun. La side laugh, bang it, bitch. Yeah, I'm the youngest one. Catch bump my 30 knife, I bet I will not run. I'ma step back and hit the cut, and I'ma let off sun. Like, boom, 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 boom. Now he crushes his whip out. Said Dirk ain't to the bitch, now I'm walking with this bitch. Now. I used to play football, that's why I'm walking with my limp, man. Tell him sick, can't say that, cause he fuckin' with the crib. Now, like we said, man, Bobster is a young dude from Harlem. But the key thing that we see about Bobster, man, is he represents that shit right with being a young dude. He's standing on that business, man. And honestly, man, he has no choice. With his age group, man, a lot of people is paying attention to Bobster. He's a part of the starting lineup. His generation right now is the starting lineup for his hood. And I, and I think he's presented himself properly up until this point since he, since he broke on the scene. He's represented OAC to the fullest. And Harlem hasn't had a lot of rappers coming out of their hood to really bubble up and put their hood in people's faces like Bobster has. And we also seen Bobster fucking around in the Inland Empire, man, like Marino Valley hoods with some of them dudes out there, you know, and uh, it was interesting to see that. But like I spoke on before, a lot of people in LA is going to have ties to the Inland Empire from San Bernardino to Marino Valley, Colton, Fontana, all that shit going to have ties to LA for the most part because a lot of motherfuckers peoples moved from the city and went out that way, you know, to kind of get away from the bullshit and take advantage of better pricing. But one thing we've seen about Bobsters is his most recent statement, which came after the Kendrick Lamar pop-out concert, where he basically was saying that everybody that's a part of the old car or the neighborhood crib car should be ashamed of themselves for how they represented their section when they was at that Kendrick Lamar pop-up. Now, again, another slippery slope. There's, there's two ways you can look at this. Looking at it from Bobsters' point of view, like I said, in his age group, that's what he's supposed to be doing. You know, a lot of motherfuckers be like, man, why, why can't niggas do this or put the guns down or do this? You know, it's different levels to this game banging shit. You know, niggas in Bobster's position in his age group is not looking for none of that. Remember when everybody was in their 20s? Nobody's listening to shit. Nobody's rational about anything. Nobody's pushing peace. This is what Bobster's on. So you can't say he wrong for trying to hold members in his car accountable. And I think one of the members was Bino. We're going to touch on Bino, but he wasn't happy because a lot of dudes from the old car and neighborhood crib car was basically up there standing with their enemies that's dissing the neighborhood and the old car. And he, he didn't take a liking to that. Now, Bobster is also not an industry dude. Yes, he's a rapper, but he's not on that level as some of these dudes that was on that stage. So maybe the understanding isn't all there when it comes to the bag and when it comes to getting that chili. You know what I'm saying? Because it could have just been that. But to keep it 100, man, he didn't like the kumbaya between the neighborhoods and the bloods. He, he was saying there's too many bloods up there for any Crips to be up there. And like I said, for what he represents, that's his business. So we got to give Bobster an A for standing on that business. You know what I'm saying? We can't fault him for that. He playing his role. Impactful for his hood with the activities. No smut on his name and his reputation good. Bobster got an A. And now, man, we, we got to get to the star of the show, man. Motherfuckers got to grab their popcorn, bake y'all cookies with y'all kids, whatever the fuck you going to do. This is what the fuck you been waiting for right here, man. We got Cameron Terrell, who was banging neighborhood, rolling 90 crib. If I let this thing rip, it ain't no coming back. 
These niggas plotting on me, need to fall back From the 30s to the 100s, yeah, we all strapped And if a nigga want war, nigga, all that But if I let this thing rip, ain't no coming back All these niggas plotting on me, need to fall back From the 30s to the 100s, yeah, we all strapped And any nigga want war, yeah, all that this is the shit that everybody be talking about right here, man. Somebody that had no business in the hood. And I know when he came around, them people that allowed him to be in the hood kind of looked at him as being a joke. But all he had to do was show them a little bit of him being with the shit, him being down for the cause or whatever you call it. He had to show a little bit of that. And they gave him a name. They gave him a block to run with, threw some bitches at him and sanctioned him to be one of their own. That shit came to bite them niggas in their ass and it made their hood look horrible. Now, rolling 90s, man, we already spoke about Go Get a KB. This nigga was around this whole situation. It was Go Get a KB, Chico, Cameron Terrell. I don't know Cameron Terrell hood. He ain't got no fucking hood name. So we just gonna call him that. He was around. And this is the shit that niggas' mamas tell him about. Stop hanging with them niggas. It's Cameron Terrell that they talking about. Because he's single-handedly made one of the hardest sets in the city look crazy but also sent some niggas up the river for all that motherfucking talking he did in that paperwork now for y'all that don't know the story man Cameron Terrell was a dude out of Palos Verde we all know Palos Verde beautiful place excellent this nigga came I think his mama was a was a lawyer dad like a news reporter maybe vice versa some shit like that came from an affluent background and you know usually like how it is sometimes motherfuckers meet some crips or whoever through high school through these parties and shit and somehow some way he started hanging with the nine o's now like i said usually in situations like this man you get a white boy of this fashion that didn't grow up in the hood or around the hood you get a nigga like this touching the soil in the hood it's a laughing style you know niggas is sending him off to do all kind of shit testing him playing with him is this nigga really down type games you know what i'm saying and uh some people over there made some wrong decisions in the acceptance of this dude who did it i can't say who really put this dude on and kind of push the issue of him being from the set, I can't say. Because like I said, it's not like he grew up over there and he wasn't from over there. So he had to hop in his bins, because that, that's what he had. He had a bins that his people bought him. He had to hop in his bins from Palos Verde and beeline it straight to Jesse Owens. Why was he allowed over there? You know, this is a cold case of when motherfuckers in the hood take some shit too far. Because not only did they put him on and he all up in the videos, you know, super banged out they showing them hella love and shit you know what i'm saying it got to the point where they took this nigga on the slide now i think they went out him and two other dudes went out hunting and if i'm not mistaken they came up on somebody from a tray i think it was two black dudes from a tray i think it was one murder i don't know if it was a double murder but either way they they came up on some dudes from their enemy hood and uh the two black dudes from the 90s hopped out did they shit camera terrell white dude was the driver in his bins so long story short man they did they shit ended up knocking them dudes down and got sold up for it now what the fuck you think Cameron Terrell did instantly told instantly this nigga put he got tears in the courtroom suit mom and dad he got the best lawyers in the city man his so-called homies had public defendants this nigga got one of the best lawyers in the city talking about he drove them over there didn't know what they was about to do they just hopped out and did they shit Basically, he got caught up in the windfall. You know what I'm saying? He got caught up in some shit. He had no idea what's about to transpire. Mind you, flashback to him banging in this video. This is some shit that young niggas need to watch out for. And you know, it's some shit that I learned when I was young and I had this one case when they was hitting me over the head with some bullshit. I think the DA was talking about it looked like a duck. It walked like a duck. It quacked like a duck. It's a duck. And that's some bullshit. Just because Cameron Terrell looked apart acted like the part sounded like the part the nigga wasn't this crippled and some dudes right now is sitting down for a murder because he made statements because of what they thought they saw in this nigga man Cameron Terrell gets the first F minus on the list man and this for everybody hood man cause it, it's niggas like this in every hood that's not even supposed to be over there this is what y'all gotta avoid in the city man somebody like this come and shake your whole life up now, the next dude on the list, man, we going back to Long Beach. This time, we going to the east side of Long Beach, though. It's some dudes that some people said when we did Long Beach, we didn't get these dudes their justice, man. And I don't know if they watched the whole video, but we did mention this dude, Hood. But we got ABZ, man. Asian Boys Crip. We got Stupid Young. SC 
GTA gang, we gon' stretch em. Fuck top ranking every single thing they reppin'. Let's keep this shit a hundred, they ain't really touchin' pay. Ten years plus, I be eating, gaining weight. Chopper get on wet like he tryna take a bath. Money in a hole, something I can really save. Bitch, you play for keeps, ain't no such thing as a pass. Call me Tiger Woods, got a stick up on his grass. Officials be the label, we bout murder and the cash. Anything against us, best believe we on the ass. Oh, Chris. Now, Stupid Young been buzzing since, man, he been out like 10 years or something like that. He, he been putting on for the Asian Crips, Cambodians, Vietnamese, Filipino. The Asian gangsters, man, he's been representing this shit for a long time. And he's been representing it right, man. Now, it's a couple Asian hoods in Long Beach. And these niggas do be putting it down, man. Their name has rang bells in the hood, man. They have some beef. ABC's definitely has some beef with TRG, the Long Goals, and some Pop Rules, man. So, ABC is no stranger to beef, man. And like I said... Stupid Young put them on early, man. It's been like 10 years this dude been out. He's been doing this shit. So I can't take too much away from Stupid Young, but there was a situation that I saw that I didn't like from Stupid Young, man. And it happened when he was at Disneyland. Nigga don't want to fight right here, nigga. Why are you making a scene right here? Nigga, what's up? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Bitch ass nigga, right here. What you gonna do? I'm right here. I'm right here. Where where you going? Right here. The fuck apples. Fuck apples. All that. Right here. Now you see somebody bumped into Stupid Young at Disneyland. Clearly one of his enemies. And start dissing. Start dissing his hood. Dissing the Asian boys. And he wanted to get out. Now, I didn't see Stupid Young with no kids at the time. But mind you, I think he was at Disneyland, a Knott's Berry Farm or some shit. I didn't see him with no little kids, with his woman or nothing like that. It was him and another dude. You know what I'm saying? And they bumped into one dude, a little two-on-one situation, which could have just been a real quick little thing. But this one dude started dissing. Cut the camera on for some reason. But we seen Stupid Young kind of walk away. He didn't really want to get down with this dude. Well, not want to. He didn't get down with this dude. Now, there could be a multitude of reasons of why. But my thing is, you pushing this line on the record, you pushing this line on the internet, or whenever the camera comes on in your favor, this crip line is being pushed. But we see some enemigo action, man. We see the enemigo cut the camera on and he start dissing to your face. The same line needs to be pushed. I don't give a fuck where it's at, man. And this is going to back when we talked about Treyway and Toonchi and the Baby Stones running to the Harlems, where niggas talking about they at court, they not supposed to die, they at court. At some point, if you one of them dudes that's pushing that line, it don't fucking matter. Mind you, I, key words, if you're one of them dudes that's pushing that line, and all them dudes that we just mentioned, Stupid Young, Baby Stones, Treyway, Toonchi, all these dudes portrayed to be those guys that's really pushing that line for their hood. So at that point, it's whenever, wherever. It's not, no, nah, I'm at Disneyland. My, my daughter's on the ride right now. We can't step to the side and do this. I might possibly get kicked out and I can't, you know, that's the normal thinking. But this game banging isn't normal. This is a lifestyle that was chosen or it chose you. Either way, this is what niggas signed up for. And like I said, the way the way things look, man, it could have been a quick little, you know, I can't fully say I wasn't there, but we did get a front row seat, man, when that camera popped on. And uh, what we did see was some dissing of the Asian boy hood, and we seen an Asian boy Crip walk off and not address that dissing. So like I touched on with Stupid Young, man, he's had impact in this set. He's put his hood on the map. His reputation seemed to be solid, again, up until this point. Not saying to completely knock him down the totem pole, but the activity wasn't there, man. We got to give Stupid Young a seat coming out of ABC, man. Now, next up, man, we going back to the west side. The west side of LA, man, South Central. We're going to the west side neighborhood on the 60 Cribs, and we touching on Conrad from the Avs. Now we know y'all been asking about many people from the city. Y'all been asking about Jay Stone. So many people, man. We got so many people to touch on. But right now, Conrad, man, we done seen him do his shit. Conrad's been buzzing for a minute, man. And he's a dude 
that's been repping his hood for a minute. A dude that has no smut on his name. And not like a couple dudes that's from 60s. Conrad is still allowed in his hood, man. He still be in his hood. Has motion in his section, man. Again, this, I don't know exactly what's going on with the 60s right now. They got a lot of fractures within they set. But again, Conrad is somebody that's good in his hood. And man, we kind of got a front row seat when he ran into the Brims. I don't know if it was Fox Hills. I don't know if it was the bridge. Some, somewhere, man. Some dudes seemingly got up on him and his homie. Some niggas from Six Dudes Brims. Now, the Brims is going to be like the main enemies for the Six O's, man. Aside from the A-Trays and the families, the Brims is up there when we talking about beef. And we saw the opposite of what we saw with Stupid Young with Conrad from the Avs. This is the example we talking about. Mind you, these niggas was out too, whether it's Disneyland, the movie theater, dinner, wherever the fuck it's at, man. You pushing that line, this is what you supposed to be on. Now, the Brims was deep, man. Them dudes was like six, eight deep. And they had the bitches with them, man. They ran up on Conrad and his homie, and, and they wanted all the smoke. So what do we see, man? We see Conrad and his homie put their back against the wall, man, and try to catch them fades. Now, Conrad homie dropped one of them niggas from Brims. After that, they both proceeded to get packed out. But we didn't see them walking away, running away, turning down nothing. And like I said, man, that's how you got to be if you one of these dudes that's popping it on your records, on the internet, Instagram, whatever. You got to be ready for the action when it comes to you in public, man. It's not you pop it on the internet, you pop it in these songs, and when your enemies turn the camera on, you looking crazy. That's not what it is, man. That's not representing this crip and right. Definitely not representing the Rolling Sixties properly if you're doing that. But Conrad stood on business with his homies. We saw it. Again, the activity present. We seen the activity present. He's a name out of his section, man. He has impact in the section and his reputation is solid, man. This is why Conrad got to get an A. He been doing this shit for his hood. Now, next on the list, man, we got to go back to the West Side neighborhood of Rolling 90 Crips. We got to go to Chico from 9-0. I lost my best friend and that nigga cross me. Niggas giving bitches pills, call a bill Cosby. I just took a half a perk, got me feeling frosty. Every time I took a L, shit, I guess it cost me. I ain't gotta say my name, bitch. I put that on my grave. All my bitches getting paid, I'll put you in the grave. Said I'm something like insane. If I ever had your bitch on the hood, she gave me brain. Hey. Like I said, I'm a. Now, Chico has been a solid representation for the 90s, man. You gotta keep it a hundred. Chico's been a well known member up at Jesse Owens for a long time, man. And he has no smut on his name, man. We seen Chico take bids and come out no paperwork, come out good. Has represented his hood the right way, man. Very impactful member from 9-0, young member. But I think, man, I'm going to be honest, man. Chico has to take some of the blame for Cameron Terrell because Chico was one of them members that was parading Cameron around the hood. Not saying it's just all his fault on why Cameron Terrell was over there and he's the reason, you know what I'm saying? Not saying that, but... I told you how this shit be going down. When a nigga like Cameron Terrell show his face over there, it start off as all fun and games. And you're really just testing this nigga. You don't believe in him. And then everybody just needed to see Cameron do a little bit to prove itself and they let this nigga hang. Insane, man. And in this Chico video is where we saw Cameron going heavy. Baby blue rags everywhere. And it was Chico who was co-signing this dude as well, man. I just got to keep it a buck. It ain't no arguments about it. Many people have said it so many times, man. It's favoritism on the block. It's favoritism in the hood. If he wasn't a favorite member, he wouldn't be on camera like he was. If he was a member they didn't believe in, that they didn't fuck with, that they didn't think was solid, they wouldn't have paraded him around that rolling 90 hood, man. And with that being said, there has to be some level of responsibility from those members that allow Cameron Terrell to infiltrate like that. Now, on his own, Chico, a solid member. Like I said, solid member. No bullshit. With the bullshit. But because of this slight situation, man, things like this will have and have had lasting effects. As can be seen by Cameron Terrell, he probably working a job right now or chilling, smoking some weed right now while the niggas he snitched on is in, in the cell. So, Chico, man, you got to get a beat for allowing this bullshit in the hood, man. Got to get a beat. And with all that being said, man, it's Rap News Street Politics, man. Best hood channel on YouTube. Y'all make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to this shit. Follow us on Instagram. We still on the road to 100K on all platforms, man. Help us get up there and keep fucking with the channel, man. We appreciate all the love that everybody's bringing to the channel, man.